we do have two speakers this time. I don't know if what's your setup actually. I didn't have time to ask. Do you have two screens, two sharing or one? Okay. Yeah. Um, the first speaker is Mario Corchero. He is a senior software developer at Bloomberg. He leads a Python infrastructure team in London, enabling the company to work effectively in Python and using company-wide libraries and tools. And your background is actually Python and C++. Then we have Mariana um, Polatoglu. I hope I pronounced it correctly. Um, she is a senior software developer in Blueberg LP in the mobile team and also a Python enthusiast. And she does the thing called the Python Guild. I think we will more, hear more about this. So please start with your talk, growing a Python community at an enterprise scale. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, well, uh, yeah, so basically uh, we're going to speak today about uh, um, what's Bloomberg and how, how Python was growing at Bloomberg. It was quite a, a long journey. And we hope that uh, this is helpful to, to you if you plan to, to grow any technology within your company or if you're thinking to trying to introduce Python within your company. It was quite a long uh, trip for us and we hope that uh, this is helpful for other people. So first of all, can I have a show of hand of who knows what's, what Bloomberg is? Okay, okay. Uh, that's the only joke for the day, don't worry. Uh, so in case, in case you don't know what's Bloomberg, uh, I wanted to put a couple of slides together because uh, at least for me, when I joined Bloomberg, I remember this was the, I, I knew Bloomberg as the, the TV channel that you would just skip through when you were trying to find the channel that you really wanted, right? Um, so Bloomberg is more than just a TV channel. There is this uh, product that we sell, which is called the Bloomberg Camilla. And basically this, uh, this is a, a software that puts together all kind of all thing from uh, financial information around the world and allows you to sell stocks and see how they progress and you know, anything that you might want around uh, financial information. Uh, Bloomberg is extremely, um, I was gonna say old, but let's say elder. Uh, it's, uh, it was formed in 1981. Uh, and uh, there are a lot of, we have a, a lot of employees and we have uh, more than 6,000 developers. Uh, the reason why I'm saying this is because I want you to understand that when I'm speaking about how, how Bloomberg started to embrace Python, uh, this is not a small startup that you can change in a day. Uh, this is a huge elephant uh, that was mainly doing C++ and was used to having the whole, the whole workforce within the company uh, to know how, how to work with C++ and uh, so many years ago as well Fortran and introducing Python at Bloomberg was, was quite a challenge. Um, I think that uh, similar to what happens in many other companies, uh, Python started to flourish at Bloomberg as a language that was useful for testing and doing some basic scripting. Uh, this was uh, in, the, in the previous company in which I was working, which is Amadeus, this was also something similar. And uh, given that you know uh, Python was kind of easy to write, it was seen as easy to write. It was preferred quite often when uh, people wanted to do some test, some kind of like high-level testing, or some scripting. And I think this is something really important when you're trying to to, to introduce something at your company. I think it's quite key that uh, you you want to start with something small and see how how it flourishes and how useful it is. After writing some some really basic scripts. Uh, something, something which was key in the history of Bloomberg uh, happened, which is that a monster was born. Uh, there was an intern who created a project called BBPy. Uh, BBPy stands for uh, Bloomberg Python, uh, which basically was a fork of the interpreter at the time, Python 2.5 or Python 2.6, uh, which was statically linking all the, well, the main C++ libraries that were being used within Bloomberg uh, that allow, uh, allowed uh, Python, well, BBPy, to tap into the solutions that uh, many developers were accustomed in, in the C++ land. This allowed them to use Bloomberg databases, uh, Bloomberg, um, uh, Bloomberg way of getting the time, uh, uh, how to communicate across services. And this was, uh, as I said, this was an intern that put together this fork of the interpreter. And it, you know, it was crashing and it was all the APIs were Still in, uh, was were full of uh, C++ idioms and uh, the manage of the lifetime was really C++ wage. Um, but uh, but this uh, this monster was a really opportunity this monster. This, uh, this allowed uh, the growth of Python within Bloomberg because then when you are writing new software, you could actually you could actually you choose Python to write meaningful code. Uh, 
um, before this, you could only use Python to, as I was mentioning, to write some scripts and some basic testing utilities. But now with this uh, monster, you are able to write uh, like uh, uh, things that were providing business value. And I remember back at the time uh, uh, when when I wrote my first Python service, my manager will tell me that is, is Python even safe to run in production? These were the old days where there were absolutely no support of, for Python in the company, and uh, you know it was it was something it was something new, but uh, and and it was not something like um, enterprisey. And something that you might want to take from this is that. Uh, don't be afraid to be disruptive and create uh, something like a simple POC can 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 get to change a whole company. Like we've we've also seen this many times within our company. That I remember there was uh, there was a tool which was actually written on top of this VPI interpreter that allowed people to write tests basically for their services with basically two three lines where they were just saying the request and the response, and that grew across the uh, across the whole the community, and that kicked. Uh, um, um, an appetite for more testing. So don't be afraid to, to have uh, crappy solutions change the company. Uh, this will indeed adapt to your company, but, uh, but it, might, it, might need to, it might initiate a move um, that is it's worth pursuing. And um, what also why, why I think that Python was really opportunistic and why Python succeed was because uh, Python arrived when, when Bloomberg was looking at uh, doing more search, more SOA. We were trying to create more services and we we're trying to communicate across teams more to, more to our services and libraries. Back in the day, everything would be basically a C++ library unless you need to speak with a UI. Um, but the problem is like the, the tooling was not there. Uh, writing a new, service in, a new service in C++ was quite costly. And quite often what you would see is that someone would create the service right, with like these two example requests. And uh, and then when when you needed to add some some new logic that would should probably go into a new service because of the cost of writing a new service that may be a couple of days people will just say like look these are related right so we might just well add them to the existing service right I'm sure everyone who is in an SOA organization has seen this and uh, but you know the problem with this happens right when once you let the mud lurk in your service. Uh, you open the door to absolutely anything coming through it. And uh, this is something that was happening in C++. And when we started to, to show Python to people within, uh, within Bloomberg, I remember we'd be, we'd be proud to say that, uh, look, come and use Python. You'll be able to write the service in, uh, in just half a day or one day, which at the time it was amazing. Uh, nowadays, we have managed to reduce that a lot. Um, but this was... Uh, this was one of the main selling points of Python at Bloomberg, the fact that you could get a new service uh, ready in half a day. And this is, I think this was probably one of the most important uh, things that Python brought and what, what led to Python spreading across the company. We found something where Python um, was, uh, was excellent compared to the existing solutions. So if you're trying to, if you're trying to introduce something in the company, try to think like, what's the main value that's gonna, that's running? Like if you want to create a, uh, as well, People like you want people to use it. Like, what's what's the main thing that's going to change on the life of, of uh, um, well, of the work of people that uh, that are today using different solutions, right? Maybe maybe you are in an organization that uh, is used like it's, uh, heavily depending on multi-threaded code. Maybe you want to look at Rust. Maybe Rust is the solution for your company. Try try to look for something that uh, will be a game changer um, because because the existing solutions will have more more infrastructure support compared to to this kind of like disrupted. Uh, um, proposals. And uh, with this, we like a community was born. Uh, there was uh, there was no infrastructure support for Python at Bloomberg. I said this was this was an intern who wrote an intern in a, uh, in a team that was doing basically aler aler alerts in the terminal. And uh, and we decided to to start organizing ourselves to share knowledge about Python because there was no material and there was no there was no training within Bloomberg to. To provide knowledge about Python, we started to do internal meetups, and uh, in the internal meetups, uh, they were a total success. It was full of people uh, because Python was already spreading, and we were learning about how Python was at Bloomberg and also about things outside. So we were learning about the, how to use Python, what was coming in Python three, um, and things like that. And I think this was also key for Python. Uh, Python Python started from from the bottom up 
and uh, we we had a community behind it uh, backing it at all time. That was really helpful because we had a chat that allowed uh, allow our users to answer questions uh, whenever they have any doubt. And uh, we were actually providing even uh, the support uh, in terms of like uh, uh, libraries because we were using um, GitHub Enterprise, but for any probably any any other any other um, any other tool that you have to share code works. We were able to start creating libraries and, and share them across our users. And, and this was called a community project. Uh, we were basically, you know, whatever, whatever I was writing for my team, I was happy to share it with the rest of the company. And uh, this started to create more and more community driven infrastructure that started to spread across Bloomberg. I remember it, it was quite shocking when, when I saw a, a really simple library created just for my team being installed in tens of thousands of hosts. I was like, what is going on here? This is way too scary, right? This is not my main job. Um, how come like this library is, is being used across the whole company? And this, this was actually something that you might want to, to look at because I remember um, coming from a company where all the infrastructure code was uh, supported by a team. It was quite challenging because there were some situations, they, they were minimal, but there were some situations where if something breaks, uh, they were calling me in the middle of the night, uh, telling me to fix something, right? And I was like, like, look, like, I'm happy to share this code, right? But I, I'm, I'm, I'm currently not there, and I'm, I'm, I'll try to fix it, but you cannot expect the same uh, kind of guarantees from this code as if this were to be my main job. Um, also, uh, we, something that we did, that which I think was quite successful in spreading Python, was we set up a lot of workshops. We were basically setting workshops where we're helping and guiding people and, and holding hands on how to write Python for the first time. Because if you're in a company uh, trying to introduce a new technology and people are not uh, comfortable with it, it's really important that you make sure they have a really good experience on the first time they try it, right? So we're holding uh, workshops every other week. Uh, we're showing people how, how, how Python could be used. And uh, one of the main concerns I think that uh, people had when, um, when we were trying to evolve for Python within Bloomberg was that uh, people were worried that Python work was going to be too slow, right? We're a company, we're a, we're a financial company and a data company that uh, needs to, to process a lot of data really quickly. And, uh, and people were concerned that Python was going to be uh, really slow, but but uh, but quite often the code that was being written was just only uh, glue code that was interacting with all the services and databases. So the bottle then was really the network, and uh, and we we realized that many teams did indeed have really high volume of uh, um, of transactions, but all they needed was basically to just have more instances of the service. They needed throughput, not latency, and I think that's something that people really. Like that, that's something that you, you need to be real careful when you think that you need your code to go faster. Many times you don't need to go to the code to go faster. You need, you need to be able to handle more transactions and you can get that by, uh, you can just increase throughput by raising the number of services if you are in an SOA architect, uh, organization. And actually the opposite happened. Uh, the people realized that Python was uh, really fast. Uh, we started, uh, we wrote one service uh, in our team in Python and our TL back at the time uh, was impressed with how quickly we were able to put that together that uh, he decided to have the whole team uh, trying Python out. Uh, quite quickly, all the teams within the department uh, were impressed with how quickly we were able to put business value into production. So the Python started to spread across the department and like that across the company. Um, like Python spread like a disease within Bloomberg because uh, it was extremely easy to write new code and to adapt to new requirements. So at the end, Python turned out not to be slow, but to be actually faster. And at this point, you know, our organization was starting to do more and more Python. It started to be one, one of the standard tools within the company. And we decided we wanted to engage outside. We started to contribute to, the Py to Python, to other open source projects. You know, I, we were using all this for free, so we had to give back. And uh, we started to sponsor conferences and, uh, and, and other events. We, we were hosting events and we even started to have a, a, a conference hosted in our own building. And I think uh, I, want to, I wanted to add this into this presentation because why people, well, many companies will see this as you know, just giving money away. I think this was super useful for us. Uh, we gain on recruiting, we gain on retention and we gain on skill. We were a company that, that had no history on Python at all. And by reaching out, we 
I think we gain a lot of skill and we gain and and we we allow our our own employees to see that you know Python was a thing at Bloomberg. And uh, with you know uh, with enough time, uh, there was there was a point where managers realized that there was no stopping Python at Bloomberg. So there was time to to have a, a team dedicated to Python. It was important to have a team to be able to tackle large scale projects. Um, we were basically doing everything as you know individual contributors trying to in our free time trying to put some things together. Um, but there was it was time to have like a team dedicated full time to do this. And uh, we started maintaining the interpreter. That's the team I'm, I'm currently uh, working on. So to maintain the interpreter, and now we're working on the migration to Python three, uh, speeding up the interpreters, um, and anything related to to Python within the company. And I was I was quite touched in 2008 when the head of SI uh, was saying that you know Python should be the default language of choice when writing new code in Bloomberg. So it was quite a long. It was quite a long trip, but uh, but I was I was happy to see that you know that this 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 thing that started just from from some of us writing some Python code uh, transforming to this use thing, and I'm now gonna pass to Mariana, which is going to keep speaking about how we structure and how we collaborate. Are you here, Mariana? There you go. I cannot hear you though. Sorry, I just okay, click a lot of buttons. So. Um... As you've heard, we started from an intern writing code and uh, actually from meetups and all of a sudden, all of a sudden with some magic involved and some spells, we got the Python guild, right? That's great. Of course, there was no magic involved. It took a very active community, people who were very proactive, wanted to see change and actually pushed for it and worked for it, which is amazing. Uh, it took a lot of hard work uh, from everyone in the community, honestly, and everyone who wanted to see this happen. And it takes management buy-in, and that is important to say, because the truth is that once you have a guild, then you have people dedicating part of their time to something outside of their normal team's work. So the management need to believe that this is useful, this is helpful, this is worth it, essentially. And it takes a lot of iterative reform. We didn't go overnight from the meetups to the format that the guild is today, actually. So, guilds have had different definitions throughout the centuries, really. And even now, in different companies where guilds exist, they have different definitions. So I really wanted to get this right. And what the guilds are in Bloomberg overall, they are community centered on specific technical topics of interest and for the advancement of technology in Bloomberg. That means, for example, the Python Guild has a very clear thing. It's about the Python language and the tooling around that in Bloomberg. Uh, of course, there are guilds like the Testing Guild that has to do about testing in general and doesn't have to do with a specific language. And the guild leaders then are charged to influence the use of the technology internally and engage with the community externally. So that means, for example, like the meetups that were mentioned, talking about best practices internally and helping out with conferences and uh, the conferences, uh, the participation of Bloomberg in the conferences as well. So the Guild is organized with uh, having chairs, usually one or two chairs, who are facilitating the Guild's processes. So in uh, the Pinethon Guild, I'm one of the chairs actually and uh, the guild leaders who are actually making this possible and doing everything else and uh, facilitating the whole guild really. So if you think of the guild, it's essentially a machine <laughs> that have a few responsibilities and those are first of all having conference engagement. So that means from looking into what conferences are happening out there and which we can sponsor and should sponsor depending with our uh, budget restrictions as well, of course, uh, helping out with speakers, with proposals, with anything that has to do with conferences really. Then we have presentations and meetups. This is uh, um, a lot. It, it, you hear meetups a lot. That's because they're great. Honestly, then they're, they're a very good tool in sharing knowledge and um, with uh, also talking with uh, presenters outside of Bloomberg to come into Bloomberg and present something that's interesting for the whole community and that people should know about. 
uh, we have internal influence and that goes back to best practices, uh, helping out developers um, start off with something or with any issues they're facing on the specific aspect of the guild. And also collaborative development. So that goes from uh, developing community projects. Also think that uh, the Python Guild is one of the oldest guilds in Bloomberg. And there is uh, the Python Guild coexists with the Python infrastructure team. But there are also other guilds that don't have an infrastructure counterpart and have to do all the development of the tooling themselves. So all that sounds like a lot, right? Because uh, when you get charged with all this, like, where do you start? How do you even start? What do you do first? And this has led us to organize ourselves into focus groups. And that means that each focus group is charged with a specific aspect of their responsibilities. And uh, usually our focus groups are led by one or one to three guild leaders. And these work great. They're amazing in terms of parallelizing our efforts and uh, separating the concerns as well. So we have six, con uh, six uh, focus groups uh, in total. And starting with the conferences, these ones are, this one is uh, the clearest to describe, I guess, because I already have, it's the same as the one for the guilds in general, looking at what conferences are there, what to sponsor, um, helping out people with their talks, with um, proposals and all that. And even with the conference engagement uh, in terms of when people go to the conferences or, you know, going to their living rooms in this case and participating in the conference. We have external events focus group. This one has to do with um, sprints, for example, as we have in this weekend for this conference and uh, with um, also uh, other external events as external meetups. We have the co-development focus group and this one has to do a lot with fostering a good environment in the community and uh, uh, making sure that uh, community projects are able to flourish. Also in terms of like uh, what the infrastructure offers and what the end developer may want as a helpful um, tooling as well, the guild can help a lot with that. We have the internal events uh, focus group as well. This one is uh, about meetups and workshops. Our workshops actually have had huge success. Um, you and have three minutes. They're uh, very good. And we also have the pragmatic recommendations focus group. This one is a very good group because you have best practices, but also you have that not all solutions fit all problems. So you can have different approaches depending on what the issue actually is. And last, we have the training focus group. So in Bloomberg, the training when you join the company is fully in Python. Uh, that uh, is, explains the tooling in Bloomberg. And this uh, focus group has to do with interfacing with the training team and anything that they may need. So how we organize, we have open meetings with the guild leaders uh, every two weeks in which we discuss any issues and we talk about proposals and anyone can actually join, which is amazing to get feedback from the community straight away as well. We have a newsletter sending out a day before the meeting that uh, each focus group give out their um, updates and uh, ask for any call for actions. And we also do retrospectives in order to reform ourselves. This is one of the best agile tools out there. And the most important of all, the community contributors. Uh, without them, the guild wouldn't exist and it wouldn't actually even make sense to exist. And it is amazing that we have that. And uh, also think that the guild leaders are leading the focus group, that, but they can't contribute to everything. So for example, if we have five community projects running, not one, one person cannot do all the coding and the community is what makes this possible and what makes this actually worth it. So what we have achieved, we went from a main C++ company from like, why do you want, I'm sorry, why do you want to write this in Python? Like, what is even Python? Isn't it too slow to, why not in Python? Python sounds great. And that is amazing. We have a very active community ever growing and it's one of the friendliest places to be in. And I absolutely love it, no bias. Uh, and uh, we also have a Python infrastructure team which shows how much the company is committed to Python actually which is amazing. So what's next? Uh, we have, we're currently reforming our focus groups and thinking of new focus groups we, we could offer and should offer. We asked the community in one of our open meetings what issues they're facing and would like to see focus groups for. And we're currently in further com conversations with the community on that.
And of course, we keep changing in order to stay current and to uh, actually meet the community's needs. And that's what we need. All right, that's it then. Thank you very much for listening. Uh, are there any questions? Thank you very much for your talk. Very interesting concept, the skill system. Um, I see we have questions in the Q&A, but I, I actually do have a question first about the skill system. Is how, how do you motivate uh, people, internal people, to join the guild and the meetups? And, and the second part of the question is, um, do people from other guilds, if I don't know what you have, for example, a C++ guild or whatever, do they join too? Uh, so, actually, I guess that depends. Uh, there are many people who are very proactive about it, and for those, we don't need to do anything, obviously, right? Um, but, of course, I think that it goes back to what Mario said in the very beginning, that there were a lot of workshops to show people how easy it is to actually write a service in Python and have it out to production straight away. Um, so, it's about convincing people that it's worth it. And uh, then it depends, I guess, on the topics and so on. But we definitely had people who converted from just like writing C++ to writing Python now and being very happy. I don't know if that answered your question fully. Perfect, yeah. <laughs> and um, now we have many questions in Q&A. Oh, we are running out of time. OK, let me go with the first from Diego. How do you raise awareness about good practices, software quality, sharing tools, designs, or techniques? Any suggestion there? I, I can take that one if you want, Mark. Yeah. So, um, so I, actually, that's that's a that's a great question, and uh, I was ha actually hoping to mention it in the slides, but I cut it because uh, I was seeing that I was somewhere running in time. Um, we we were using we were basically relying on uh, an internal mailing list that we have and also pushing a lot on, on meetups and workshops. Uh, lately, we also started to have more like proper training, which helped a lot. But this is a really good question. It's actually key because um, when we started uh, and, and when people started to move from C++ to Python, we saw that many people were not writing any tests at all, which for us was unthinkable in Python for lar large code bases. But things like people were relying on the compiler and we had to put a lot of emphasis on making sure that looked like uh, you need to follow what are good practices on Python, and you, you need to make you need to make sure that uh, uh, did you re rewrite tests when you write new code. So, uh, like, absolutely agree uh, that you need a way to 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 raise awareness about the practice and everything. And yeah, I would we were basically relying on internal mailing list, meetups, workshops, and the internal networks that we have for that. Okay, so we have time for the last question. Um... How do you manage the time of organizing events, leading these initiatives and doing your engineering job at the same time? How um, supportive is Bloomberg in this regard? I can take that the one uh, again, uh, as well then. Uh, and then you can probably answer as well on the same hour. So, um, so at the beginning, we started basically, so you, you know, if. Because what we were doing in some way was also relevant to our team. Uh, at the beginning, there was no issue at all, right? It was kind of like a community project, but it was in some way related our, with our team because we were, we were starting to do more Python services. When this got more formalized, uh, there was there are some organizations like the guilds, as Mars uh, mentioned, and there's another thing called like the technical representat the representatives, which is another organization within Bloomberg, that in theory give you 20% of your time to do whatever you you want. That's uh, that's something I think many other companies do. And uh, so basically, we were. I mean, I would like to say that I was just using that twenty percent of my time to to do Python projects, uh, like Python community projects. But we all know that's not true. And at the end, I was basically overworking, uh, which is something I don't recommend. Um, but yeah, like Bloomberg in theory is is really supportive of this. Uh, the company is really supportive, and I think I would encourage every company to do that, like try to encourage this kind of uh, uh, side projects that in some way, I think, advance the company. But uh, but it's really, if it's something that you are passionate about, it's really easy to get out of hands. So that was kind of my situation. I don't mark how was we sign. Uh, sure. The only thing I was going to add is that I think it goes back to getting the management buy-in and convincing them that it's actually something that is useful for the company overall. So yes, there are going to be projects for the team, obviously, 
but uh, some of the time can go into guilds and that helps a lot even with the personal development to be honest and that is amazing okay thank you again very much we unfortunately we had we have two more questions here but uh, time's up so please take these questions to discord chat um, with control k if you enter community you will get the the channel talk python community enterprise hello and there will be um, more questions so thanks again for this talk